So are you somebody who's ready to fight fatigue and also beat burnout? We got the author of a new book, has the tools right now to power your brain and also your body to transform your energy levels. And joining us today is functional health practitioner and author of Eat for Energy. Ari I don't know if you guys can hear me. All of a sudden, the sound just uh -oh. cut out on my end. Ari Witten, <laughs> we hear you. Can you hear us? Hello, Ari. Okay, oh. let me see. I was hearing you fine, and okay. then you know, the you speaker, the guy behind the scenes was giving me instructions, and now I can't hear you at he, all. Oh, no. But he's got energy. Okay, now I got you. Now you there got it. Go. Awesome, cool. awesome, yeah. awesome. Okay, so let's talk about your exploration of energy and fatigue. How did this all come about? Yeah, well, I, you know, health science has been my passion since I was a little kid, since I was 12 years old. I'm 38 now, so over 25 years. Um, this has been sort of my full-time, lifelong passion and obsession. Uh, and when, you know, I was a, initially as a teenager, it was very much, my world was body composition, fat loss, muscle gain, bodybuilding. I was an athlete. I was interested in enhancing performance. And then in my mid-20s, something happened which kind of shifted everything. Uh, which was I got mononucleosis from Epstein-Barr virus, and it hit me very, very hard. I was debilitated for almost a year from that with severe chronic fatigue, and I really watched as kind of almost every aspect of my life fell apart, from my relationship with my girlfriend to friendships to I was in school at the time. I also had a job, and everything was just falling apart as I just didn't have the energy to be able to, 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 to invest in any of those aspects of my life. And that was really the catalyst for me becoming fascinated and obsessed with this thing that I had up until that point really taken for granted, which right. is energy. Mm -hmm. And I realized that energy is really kind of the, the, the crux. It is the central key to having a good life and being able to pursue your dreams and live the hey, life that hey, you Ari, wanna live. All right, all right, really and, quickly, um, all right, can you, you know, hear me? Yeah, sorry, All go right. ahead. I, I'm so glad you, you brought up energy because you, your work, we're talking about your book. You, you focus on what's called the body's cellular energy centers. So mm -hmm. what, what, what are they and why are those things so important? They are the body's mitochondria. Now, for many years, there's been a focus around lots of different mechanisms of the body. And there's many different mechanisms that are in, in some way or another involved in energy production. We could talk about different hormones, things like cortisol and things like testosterone and things like uh, growth hormone and insulin and, and thyroid hormone. Uh, but the real key, the, the thing that's most upstream, that's really controlling, regulating human energy levels is our mitochondria. And these mitochondria used to be thought of, you know, for example, in your high school or college biology classes, you were kind of taught to think about them as these sort of mindless energy generators that just take in carbs and fats and pump out energy. But what science has discovered in the last decade or so is that they have actually a, a dual role. They have this other role that is just as important as their role in energy production, and that is a role as environmental sensors. They are danger sensors. They are basically like the canaries in the coal mine of our body. And to the extent that they are picking up on dangers, on various kinds of stressors, everything from poor nutrition, to poor sleep, to exposure to various kinds of toxins, to psychological stress, to you name it, every type of stressor, they, as soon as they pick up on those stressors, they're turning down the dial on energy production and shifting resources towards cellular defense. And that's really fundamentally what controls human energy levels, is the extent to which our mitochondria are shutting down energy production in response to perceived stress. Okay, we have so many questions. How does our body clock impact energy? What can we do about it? 30 seconds or okay. less, go. So we need to think of sleep and energy as really two sides of the same coin. And they are connected by something called the circadian rhythm, which is basically our biological clock. Now, the, the very short version of this is, I could talk to you about this for five hours, but the very short version is, we've got a central clock in our brain that's primarily responsive to light inputs. Mm -hmm. And we also have, as a more new scientific discovery, we have peripheral clocks in almost every tissue and organ in our body, from our brain to our liver, our intestines, our muscles, our hormone-producing glands, everything. And the goal, really, if we want to optimize our circadian rhythms, which in turn regulate many different neurotransmitters, many different hormones that impact on every aspect of our health, from our mood to our libido to our sleep quality to our energy levels, 
if we want to optimize it, we want to synchronize our central clock and our peripheral clock. And the peripheral clocks are primarily responsive to nutrition inputs. So we can use certain nutritional strategies to help optimize that and sync everything up and optimize in turn all these different neurotransmitters and hormones that impact on so many aspects of our life. So it's obviously morning time right now. Maybe folks aren't feeling you know hot not a lot of energy and they're saying ah we, we've got a coffee machine so we're going to pour some coffee into our yes. cup we've got it right here on set mm -hmm. it, is caffeine a solution to fatigue please say yes yeah it would be great if it was that simple right if <laughs> right. if fixing the epidemic of chronic fatigue was as simple as everybody just take more stimulants and caffeine unfortunately it doesn't work that way oh, as so many people have discovered those. because and, and here's the reason why this is, this is really not well known uh, among the general public, but it's, it is well known, well established in the science. So if you take a person who doesn't normally consume caffeine and you give them caffeine, you get a genuine boost. You can measure this, many studies have shown there's a genuine boost in energy levels, in mental performance, cognitive performance, and physical performance. But here's the part that isn't very well known. When you are a chronic caffeine consumer, when you consume it every day, that benefit disappears completely. Now, the part that's difficult for most people to grasp is people will subjectively still feel, even if they're chronic consumers of caffeine, they will still feel subjectively like they are getting a boost in their energy levels. Now, what's actually happening is in response to chronic caffeine consumption, the brain actually makes negative neurotransmitter adaptations that lower your baseline levels of energy. So what is perceived as a boost when people drink their coffee and they think they're getting a boost in energy is actually just a boost up to what used to be their normal levels of energy and oh. mood and brain function. Oh my goodness. And, All right. and this is well established in the, in the scientific <sighs> literature, but not well known. Ari, can I say something? This book that you yeah. gave us, this is just a nice book. Like I know you were just talking <laughs> about, you know, you don't, you, you want to feel healthy, but not care about the aesthetic. This is a nice aesthetic. Like, we're it, so yeah, out of time. Like, really uh, sorry, nice. we can't get to the other questions. The book is Eat for Energy. Visit theenergyblueprint.com for more information. We'll be right back.